Hello and welcome to episode four of Euro Balls in partnership with Labrooks, our Euro 2020 show here on Balls.e. I'm Mick McCarthy, delighted to be joined once again by Kevin Doyle today. Uh, Kevin, it's our second day of uh, the rest period between the groups and the knockouts. So, uh, you know, we don't want to rest here. We want to do more Euro 2020. So what better way than to spend a few minutes here uh, previewing the next four days of action? I want to rest, Mick. I do. I was happy with the few days off. Um, it was good to get my head back on it. Um, and now it's now it's what really matters, isn't it? It's an awful lot of work. Group stages to get rid of six teams, is it? Yeah. You know, it's an awful lot of games and you know, you're really only now the last games in fairness in the group were all pretty interesting and now it's just, you know, the proper stuff. The teams, the main men start to come alive now. I didn't know what to be doing myself last night. I have to be honest. The kitchen got a clean of, of, of which it hasn't seen in a couple of months. I have to say, as uh, as I wound down without uh, Euro twenty, without, without you and Dara and the lads in the RT studio to keep me company. But uh, it all does kick on again on Saturday. And you know, I know you're in there for the first game, which I'm weirdly looking forward to. We've seen Wales and Denmark play each other about forty times recently because they're always in Ireland's groups, in Nations Leagues, and in World Cups and everything else. But uh, this kind of feels like a completely new game. We talked a good bit about Denmark. Wales, we weren't expecting to do much of this tournament, but they have actually been pretty good in, 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 in what we've seen. They got that, like, you know, the first day even, like, it's like even to come back and get that draw and to show that kind of character. This isn't the team of 2016, but they've actually shown that they actually have a, they have a, something to say about what happens in this tournament. Yeah. Yeah, and they could easily win this game. Uh, very evenly matched. That's a good draw for both, really, isn't it? Yeah, Denmark probably have a stronger overall squad. And you go through the teams, you know, go through the clubs that players play for, in fairness, you probably, probably, you know, underestimate them a little bit. When you look who they play for, they've got great players. Wales, though, have two superstars, I suppose, or one superstar and one really, really good player. And it's more, um, you know, everyone talks about Gareth Bale, but to me, it's more how Aaron Ramsey plays. If he plays well, they have a great chance. He's, he was quiet in the first game. He was very good in the second game. Um, he hasn't had a fantastic season injury-wise. Um, Juventus' move, I suppose, hasn't worked out perfectly for him, but still a really good player. He was in the team of the tournament in the last Euros, one of the players of the tournament. He was brilliant for them. Uh, so if he, he stays fit, and he is, um, he's a few games under his belt, and there was worries about his fitness beforehand, and he brought his own physios and things like that, but he showed, showed um, especially in the second game, that he, he can, you know, he's still got it. If he plays well against Denmark, Wales have a great chance. How much is to do, do you think, with, like, you know, we're going to talk about Denmark and how, how, how galvanised they've been by a much more serious thing. Well, you know, but, like, the fact is that Wales are there with a caretaker manager, and that can go one of two ways. But when it goes well, there is a kind of a it does bring squads together and it does bring a kind of a everybody's against us attitude sometimes that can really turn into something special. Yeah. Um the caretaker thing, you know, there's no pressure on him. I'm only caretaker manager. If it goes yeah. brilliant. If it doesn't, well, I'm only caretaker. And the same with the players, you know, it probably brings a more relaxed attitude. You know, he's not the big boss, the fella who, you know, everyone dislikes a lot of the time. He's not, he's just a caretaker and he's in there and everyone's friend. So that can definitely, in the short term, that can be a really good thing. I suppose, realistically, he's not caretaker manager, isn't he? I can't see Ryan Deeds coming back. Um, unlikely, but, um, you know, I suppose now what they've done getting out of group means he probably will be their, their, their you know, uh, Full time manager. Yeah. Um, He's job. Um, yeah, it definitely has. There's definitely pros to it. Um, a relaxed attitude when it's an intense tournament and everyone's together for so long. The more relaxed and the more happy everyone can be, and, and that side of things, bringing him, him as a caretaker, as I said, he's everyone's friend. You're not really want to follow with the caretaker manager. It definitely can have an advantage in that short term time frame. We talked about Denmark a good bit, and you know, as you said, they'll see themselves as having a good chance here. Both teams will. But, you know, the winners of this plays, possibly the Netherlands, we'll talk about that mm -hmm. in a few minutes. But, again, a team that are very impressive so far, but before the tournament, people don't think are sort of, they're, they're possibly there for the taking, you know. Maybe if they had Van Dijk, it'd be a different story. Suddenly, Denmark are going to be looking at this thinking, you know, shades of Euro 92, you know, yeah. possibly England in the semi-final or Germany, yeah. you know, the, you know, the good record against Germany. You know, there, there is a path. There's a path yeah, there. Yeah. Miracle. 
Well, a lot of things in life aren't they, as if someone's done done it before you. You know, if someone's taken that path and they have an example of their forefathers doing it, the goalkeeper obviously his father has done it, so they know it's possible. Nothing is impossible in football. I suppose I wouldn't look too far past this game if I was them. Though I would be thinking, "Oh, we get this and them next." Um, I think Wales at you know, four to one up there. I think it's closer than that. I wouldn't like if 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 Gareth Bale plays well and he's shown signs of it. But if he plays really well and said Aaron Ramsey plays well, they've enough everywhere else to be solid enough. Um, they have a few goals in that team. So uh, it, it's closer than that odds predict. I think Wales are a good bet. I still think Denmark will probably win the game, but Wales aren't a bad bet for the one there. Yeah, absolutely. As I said earlier, I think both teams happy with the draw. Uh, I think, well, whatever it is, the, the way things worked out to, to get each other. Yeah. In the, next game. the second game that day then, I think a lot of people are looking forward to watching Italy again. They, they took us by surprise on the first day of the tournament. And then since then, they've they've backed it up and backed it up. But, you know, they're probably a bit of a, you know, their second team was out against Wales. They still played well. So it's a while since we've sort of seen them and people are excited about it. And it seems like Austria kind of getting that win and kind of getting things together the last day is almost like the perfect little sort of uh, next step for them. You know, I don't think many people see yeah. Austria when you can see they're 7-1 the to one to win the game. But... If Italy are for real, this is a game they'll go and take care of. Yeah, it's I haven't done any Italy games. One of the only teams I haven't done. Um, so I've just been seeing highlights of them, and they look great. And some of their goals, the first game, their goals in the first game against was a Turkey, uh, and everyone people were sort of fancy in Turkey they just took them apart. Um, you, you worry. Uh, the only sort of thing I worry about is, which is stupid, really, but they're too good too soon. Do you know, yeah. I think some of the other teams are building up a bit slower than Italy and Italy have come into it just flying from game one and just trying to maintain that the whole way through. They'll have a little down point. I suppose they got to rest. It was nice they got to rest these players in the third game. It's interesting. They rested their players in Belgium who could have done the same. Didn't. Belgium stuck with their sort of strong mm. 11. So, um, Mancini's a very experienced manager, um, really successful manager. Um you know his reason for that i suppose is you know keep them fresh and then i suppose belgium's one is while while they're going is good keep them on the pitch and keep the sort of routine going and the momentum going so uh two viewpoints on it um see see how it works out as well we won't know but austria austria even at seven to one in a in a one-off game you know it's anything can happen they're not they're not useless austria um but yeah you'd see you listen if Italy that like to have done they'll win the game but you know it's never that easy Absolutely, yeah. Longest unbeaten run since 1935, yeah. 1939 or something like that that Italy are on at the moment. So, uh, I don't know. They sort of, they they snuck into it a little bit, but they shouldn't have. We should have seen it. Yeah, uh, yeah no, it, I think definitely seen by many people as a real possible winner now, even though um, that side of the draw is absolutely impossible, as we'll get to now in a, in a second with the fourth game um, on Sunday. But uh, Holland, Czech Republic, see any problems? You've seen a bit, a good bit of Czech Republic because they were in England, Scotland's group. But yeah, any issues for the Dutch there? Oh, um, Dave, Holland again. Oh, we're not allowed to call him Holland. Sorry, the Netherlands. Yeah. Um, got in trouble for that a few times. Um, the Netherlands. Um, They've really, I don't know if to get surprised and you go through their team and their squad, I suppose more the manager everyone worried about and the, and the I know, problems he's had in recent years. But he has had success managing in Holland, fantastic success with Ajax, with their youth system and then with the first team and all of bringing their shoe. This squad is a young squad and he's having success with them. They've been really well. I did their first game and they were fantastic that night. Um, and we spoke, criticised the manager beforehand, but... When you look at what he does with Dutch players and the Dutch system and, and the way they do it, maybe we shouldn't be surprised that he's getting the Netherlands to play really well. Um, they should have enough to be the yeah. Czech Republic. In fairness, though, the Czechs um, did okay in their group. and, and But there's, yeah, Holland has too much quality all over the pitch, I think. Um, yeah. And those, the dog some decent players as well the, and dogged but you think that I know I wonder are, are the Dutch going to be eventually kind of just a little bit light up front do you think maybe like with V course or someone there is probably yeah. not not of the standard of a Van Nistelrooy or Van Persie or Van Basten yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so long you know fair point you think of the strikers Holland have had over the years like going back to when I was a kid I loved Kluivert loved them yeah. before that Van Basten and they've always had and they don't have this time and that's probably a fair point they're making up for it in other areas and they get goals from everywhere like um, 
what's the name, the, the wing back, um, the freeze has got a few goals and gets really far forward. And, and you know, they're, they're making up for everywhere else. But yeah, you'd like, like nearly all the top teams have a centre forward here who want to get a good few goals. I think nearly everyone who wins the Euros ends up with the, nearly the top goal scorer. If not, England have the same problem. They could do it. Their goal scorer taken off. They have one, but it just hasn't fired yet. But, you know, I'm going through the teams here in my head and they all seem to have a, a centre forward or someone. Ronaldo is not an outside centre forward, but he's the one scoring goals for, for Portugal. But, um, yeah, if you're supposed to be picky with the Netherlands, that's where you'd say the weaknesses. Yeah, very much a nine these days, I suppose, Ronaldo and the way he's playing. And this is brings us lovely into the kind of biggest game of the weekend anyway, possibly the biggest game of the round. I think there'll be another game uh, that we'll, uh, we'll, we'll talk about in a few minutes that yeah. can uh, rival it. But Belgium-Portugal, Lukaku-Ronaldo, if you want to look at it that way, you know, in t- terms of the two types of players you were talking about, but so much more here. Belgium have been class so far. And I think with De Bruyne getting like he just looked amazing the minute he came on against Denmark so he's back fit again Hazard is getting more and more minutes under his belt if he comes alive you tip them I think at the start of the tournament and mm. I think it's looking more you know, they have they've such a hard route through and they've a yeah. lot of games to win but just from what you've seen so far you'd be very happy with that pick yeah yeah you'd have to be delighted if you were Belgium um Lukaku looks so sharp and strong and, and, you know, even if he doesn't score, he's holding it up and he's bringing people into play. He's really looking top, top class. De Bruyne getting on in that Denmark game um, and changing the game when he came on. And, it, and Hazard, who's so important over the years for them, has so many goals and caps for them. Uh, you know, and had such a bad season. And he came on in that game as well. And because De Bruyne was so good, it sort of got overlooked Hazard, but he looked sharp and he, he, he had some nice touches and took the pressure off when it needed, when Denmark were really putting him under it. A lot of pressure in that first half when he came on again. He had a, he definitely had a positive impact. So all positive signs for them. But this is such a hard game. Portugal uh, strong throughout as well. Um, they'd be happy enough with how things have gone in there to get where they are. But yeah, there's one of these obviously going to leave now. Disappointing that they're meeting so early in the tournament. Um, but I would have to like everyone. You'd have to go with Belgium. I worry about Belgium at the back. My like talking about weaknesses and they looked. When, when Denmark went down, if Denmark had had a bit more quality to finish, mm. uh, they could have been three or four ahead in the first half. And they just, Belgium were just very, very slow. I suppose at the back, is they're aging, a uh, bit stiff. They play a three at the back and they, and they look to just be caught on the hop a few times, um, on their arse a few times. And that would be my worry if I was Belgium. If they can, if they can defend fairly well, they'll win the game. Yeah. I nearly had a heart attack when I saw Thomas from Allen coming on. Yeah, in, uh, in whatever the guy didn't know he was still playing. Never mind, still in the international squad. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I don't. It'd be Alvarez and and uh, Vertonghen. A, Vertonghen, yeah, Denmark. Old Vertonghen, partnership, yeah. Really, it? yeah. What? Yeah, it's a pretty old partnership. Yeah. Like, like you know, Spurs wanted to move on from that. You would expect best international team in the world would be able to as well, but obviously not. But two good players, obviously. Um, yeah. So like the. the that that's Portugal's route, really. Portugal very very good in attack when yeah. they get going. Belgium with a uh, with possibly a weak link at the back. You think th- there's a part of me that thinks maybe Belgium will just dominate the game so much that Portugal won't get a chance to exploit that. But I don't know. Yeah, I know it's a hard it's hard to call because Portugal have players themselves that can dominate a game. Yeah. Really interesting. I don't know. Is it going to be a bore fest just because they cancel each other out? Um, I obviously hope not. There's so much quality on there. Um, just looking at those odds, they're probably just about right, I'd say, to be honest with you. But I wouldn't be like either of these teams could win this game. Ronaldo just wants a, you know, he's just a story and he has a part to play in the tournament. You can see him, you can just see him lifting that trophy at the end and having new records and just, um, you know, but Belgium has such quality, it'd be really hard to stop them. But, you know, it's, yeah, really yeah. hard. The, the odds are close for a reason here. Yeah. yeah, if Portugal do win this, you can see this turning into Ronaldo's tournament and that being yeah. the entire narrative of the last roar of the, the dying best player yeah. of all time or whatever you might want to call him, you know? Um, look, I think that, as, as you kind of say, like, we don't know what's going to happen. The odds are tight. This is just one to watch, isn't it? And to enjoy yeah. a top-quality game so early in the tournament. But uh, on to Monday then, um, like, Croatia and Spain, I think neither have impressed. Spain obviously got the job done the last day. France and Switzerland, I think, is a nice draw for France. You know, it's like Switzerland are a decent team. They're going to have to play well to beat them. Uh, 
you know, they got the job done in their last game kind of impressively, actually, in the end, kind of yeah. be one against Turkey or whatever. But, you know, this is exactly the type of, this isn't like Belgium having to go and beat Portugal. This is a step that France could take to take a step up to the next level, yeah. to the quarterfinals. Yeah. Um, and Spain did impress in their last game. Nick. Yeah, they did, yeah. yeah like, you called it, I didn't. <laughs> yeah, they goals against Slovakia. Slovakia are no great shakes, but still had to be beaten. Um, France, Switzerland, yeah. You, like, talk, this is an easier one to call. Um, shocks happen, obviously, but um, Switzerland aren't, are, are far from useless and have a good squad all around, but nothing compared to France. France did against against um, Portugal, you know, showed times their quality and um, I know it was two all in the end wasn't it but um the worry for France for me is is Mbappe hasn't scored yet I suppose and they're tipped to be the top goal scorer or tipped to be the star of the tournament and he has played well he's looked dangerous he's, you know won a penalty and stuff and he, he is he's he's making teams think obviously defensive wise his pace is always going to threaten teams score or not they always have to worry about that but you just like him to have a few goals under his belt at this stage um but I still you know I Pogba has looked really good centre midfield where he hasn't really played for France. He always plays on the left for France and comes in and that's how they got the best out of him. But he's been playing centre mid and like his true ball for the for the first goal for um for Benzema. Uh fabulous. And Benzema's finish, in fairness, Mbappe and scoring, but Benzema's finish was top class. His run was really good. Great finish. Um, you know, the only place he could really put it in off the post there. So um yeah, no, France, you can see them just not coasting, but just winning this okay, comfortable, maybe like a 2 0 or something like that, and, and moving on. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, so maybe Monday will be possibly the least of the dramatic days. Uh, but we move in then to Tuesday, the game that should be in Dublin, Kevin. Uh, mm. you know, I don't know whether that would have been a good or a bad thing, but I, I can't imagine <laughs> it would have been so much fun to be waiting all yeah. week for England, Germany, and Lands End Road, but unfortunately, it's got to be in Wembley. There's also going to be a big crowd at this. I, I understand. I, I I don't know if it's confirmed yet, but they're talking about forty or fifty thousand. Yeah. It's Germany back to England, you know, back to Wembley. Yeah, brilliant, isn't it? Euro '96, World Cup '96, so on, so forth. We'll be hearing a lot about it, but yeah, as a match, this is going to be a cracker as well. Yeah, um, Germany were nearly out the other night, like hungry. Yeah. Yeah. Got hungry. Who were no great shakes. You'd worry for for Germany. Um, a couple of times during the night, they were going to be out. Um, England, um, I think you know, England have got a bit of criticism. I think they've been fine. Uh, listen, they haven't set the world alight, but they've been really solid. And all they want to do in the group stage win your first game. They were into the second round by their second game, you know, it didn't matter the results, um, at the third game, and all oh, that's what you want. Everyone wants them to be this, that, and the other. And you, I think they're just sort of slow burning their way into this stage. I would prefer this game to be later in the tournament just for the you know historical side of it. It's coming a bit early, but I, I think they I think they will beat Germany. I think they're really solid England. Sadly, from a TV spectator point of view, um, not setting the world alight, but they're just well organized, solid team. And and Gareth Southgate doesn't make decisions decisions based on what the papers say or what the crowd want or whatever. He goes with what he believes in what his stats people are telling them all those side of things um and yeah i just have a you know i just you know i, I wouldn't be as negative about england as other people have yeah fair enough yeah and you think they'll beat germany it's kind of the, yeah. the will be enough yeah okay well I don't, yeah i don't think it'll i don't think it'll be massive difference in the game but i do i do think they'll win i think they'll win okay. in, in the game like win harry, win. Kane will score. Oh. harry kane will score he looked sharper to me the last day i yeah. thought he was a bit better and uh, a feel in score. Okay, very good. Set up by uh, Manchester City's Harry Kane to score, being set up by Manchester City's Jack Grealish. <laughs> <laughs> so like that, yeah. Yeah, look, it's got to, again, this is one I think there's going to be so much build up and so much hype. I hope the game lives up to it in some way. Um, and also, it will be great to see like a real crowd in Wembley. The, the prize for winning this game is a quarterfinal against Sweden or Ukraine, which obviously is the last game. And there's a, you know, I think no matter how these teams perform, there'd be, after all the brilliant countries we talked about, we'd kind of roll our eyes a little bit at this game and think what a letdown for a knockout tie. But, yeah. you know, in fairness to Sweden, they have been really good in this tournament. Yeah. They've, got, they've got some exciting players. They've got some exciting old players like Seb Larsson still, still like, he's, going and all. he's still played every minute, I think, you know, and he's yeah. still, he's 36. And, but they've got young players as well. Sweden have been really good. Ukraine haven't been, let's face it. They, 
it's, it's weird that they're even in this uh that they've made to this round but I guess this is just going to be it's going to be a come down no matter what but it, yeah. they're the kind of games that sometimes can grab the attention I don't think I'm doing this game thank god Probably. I uh, I did Ukraine the first game in fairness I know them well uh and I expected a lot more um uh, listen they fluked their way into this haven't they they've been they've been terrible you know they might surprise because they do have good players Ukraine um they had a fantastic qualifying campaign. Like they were in Portugal's group and they finished four points ahead of them. They took, I think, finished four or five points ahead of them, took points off them, beat them, and drew with them. So there's something there, but they just haven't shown in this tournament yet. Sweden have been excellent. If they do get through to play England, Sweden are sort of a bogey team for England, aren't they? Yeah. Um, over the years. So listen, you never know, but they haven't been exciting in Sweden. Watch, I haven't, I haven't actually seen, I've seen highlights, seen their goals. I haven't seen them play 90 minutes. I haven't been working on any of their games, but um, you could listen, if Ukraine are like they have been, um, Sweden will beat them but I just have a feeling Ukraine might you know that feeling of relief and we've looked our way in here fluked it and you know what now we can just go out and play and sort of you know it's a bonus that we're here now and Ukraine do have some good players um, so I don't know I have a feeling Ukraine might win it okay well we'll see how it goes and we'll talk before the quarterfinals when we have a better sense of everything that's happening but if I was to get you to pick a final from either side of the draw here so it's Wales Denmark Netherlands, Czech Republic, England, Germany, Sweden, Ukraine on one side. Yeah. Uh, Italy, Austria, Italy, Austria, Belgium, Portugal, uh, Croatia, Spain, France, Switzerland on the other. What's your final? England. England. If England win this, like it's hard to see them not getting to a final. If they beat Germany, the route is set up for them, isn't it? So England. England. I worry about Belgium at the back. Um, Oh, England, France. England, France in the final. And I've picked, I've tipped Belgium. So what am I doing? Oh. <laughs> yeah, well, look, yeah. you have to go by the evidence of your eyes. Yeah. You've you, seen, you, uh, seen uh, Vertonghen yeah, on his, yeah, his arse against uh, Denmark a couple of times. And I just, yeah, France are a bit stronger um, defensively and all throughout. Just Mbappe. They need Mbappe just to fire. Like, they can't be relying on, on, on others. So. Yeah, go on, England, France. You're just to find the France one that everyone will know, and the England one, I think, is going to uh, surprise a few people. But we'll see if you're right. I have to say, there's always always a part of the Irish person that wants to see England fail. Like, it's yeah, yeah. Fail. But also, they're getting to the final. The storyline that would be there as we worry slash dread slash look forward to it all would be, it'll keep the tournament alive. They, all they can get to the final and lose me. <laughs> I'm not look. I'm on by. I'm an unbiased broadcaster here, a broadcast journalist, uh, Kevin. I wouldn't have any opinions on anything, you know. Um, um, well, yeah, no. Listen, there's the group. It's the side of the group they're in. Like it's yeah. just, yeah, it's it's an easier run. Just simple as that. If they get past Germany, if they get past Germany, it's a big question. It's got to be a brilliant few days. Um, just like even even just kind of going through those games one by one. There, incredibly excited. We only have one more night of not having to watch football. That we've got four in a row. You're going to be in RT, I think, for all of them. So uh, good luck with the good luck with the you, miles. You'll be watching. You'll be watching ITV, and I'll be in RT. I won't. I won't. But uh, good luck with the miles on the clock and uh, safe driving up and down and stuff like that. Yeah, but enjoy yeah. it as well because it is it is one to enjoy. Kevin will be back with us next week. Uh, don't forget, um, Ladbrokes have lots of specials. Just get on to, uh, every match day onto your account on Ladbrokes.com. Uh, for great offers like one euro free bets on five aside and different things like that after 10 a.m. on every match day to check out your offers there. If you are having a bet on anything, please always gamble responsibly. Visit gunlewy.net for more information. We're going to let you watch the last 16 of the Euro 2020 and we'll be back with you to look ahead to the quarterfinals next week. <laughs>